everybody. Welcome to the 9 o'clock set of Mesro. It's good to see you all here. And, uh, looking forward to introducing this duo for their second set. But before I do, I want to remind everyone this front room is a listening room. So please keep your conversations to an absolute minimum while the music is happening. Now, without further ado, please put your hands together for Alex Blake on the bass. Please give it up for Burnett Thompson. in the far southwestern mountains of China, uh, groups that migrate from Vietnam, Indonesia, Cambodia, Myanmar, even as far as Nepal and India, in, into that region with different languages, different clothing, different food, and different music. Uh, so that was actually Alex, that was our first project together, the, yeah. the Chinese music. And then we followed that with music of Middle Europe in the time of uh, the Reformation, so any time from 11th century to 16th century. And, uh, and both of these, uh, these collections of repertoire went, in the case of the Chinese music, it was, uh, I took it all over China and with different kinds of ensembles, uh, with a Guqin player in Kunming and with an opera singer in Shanghai and a jazz group in Beijing, another jazz group in Xi'an, so forth. Uh, and with the Reformation thing, we did that in London and Prague, Berlin, and we were supposed to do it in Paris and, and Vienna, uh, but that got shut down by the pandemic. So uh, tonight, what we're doing is music of the 17th century in uh, North and to some extent South America. Um, so we'll be doing music uh, from Africa, and uh, Native American music of that time, which we have uh, surprisingly quite a bit, and, uh, and then also music of Middle Europe. So these were three different uh, pronounced cultures that were lived in, the, in North America uh, in the early and mid 17th century. So that's the short story. So we're gonna start with a, actually a modern tune by a Malian M-A-L-I, Malian um, Kora player named uh, Mamadou Diabate. So this is actually a modern piece, uh, but um, I mentioned to the earlier crowd that it's very hard to find actual transcriptions of Af African music from four or 500 years ago, <coughs> uh, although we do have some. So this is called Dagna, by, written by Mamadou Diabate.
we're going to do something completely different. Um, this is actually um, from Central uh, North America, from the, the region of o what we now call Oklahoma, and it's a Cheyenne melody, and it's, it's a lullaby, of all things. So, uh, by the way, if you want to get in touch with us, uh, the, the website, it's very simple, it's pianojazz.com. Uh, feel free to drop me a note. And also, all of the recordings are there. You can download them for free. Um, I know, it's crazy, right? <laughs> but leave a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at this time of year, everybody brags on Facebook about all the downloads that they have for their music. And then they put it to like, uh, like you know, 580,000 downloads in 80 countries and all this kind of stuff. And then it says the net of the whole thing is a dollar and three cents. <laughs> Uh, 
this is called uh, a lullaby for a nursing baby. A lullaby for a nursing baby. Are you all right?
sometimes we forget that the populations that were already here in the 16th century in this continent were extremely gifted and creative people. So we're not forgetting that tonight. Uh, the next tune is called The Cat Foot. Um, it's from somewhere in Middle Europe and written in 1480. So uh, Alex and I love the music of the 1480s. Uh, I know people here love the music of, the, for instance, the 1980s. So we're just old fashioned. You know? <laughs> this is the cat foot, Katzen Pfote. It's some kind of dialect. Katzen Pfote. Katzen Pfote.
This is the Reformation Age of Mayhem CD. You know, it was an ugly time. There was a professor at Oxford that wrote a book, his name was Marshall, called The Reformation of All Things. And dig into that book and you'll get an idea of what was going on at that time. <clears throat> so, uh, which reminds me of I want to do a t another t uh, a tune that a friend of ours, uh, Salia Suso, uh, plays, and I thought he was going to be here, a uh, gentleman from Senegal that's a brilliant color player. So this is a, a tune called Mamadou Bakiti. It's from a, a, an old um, story, um, which Alex had completely forgotten, but you'll have to it's just a story, you know, you know it comes from a story. A story, S-T-O-R-Y. But before we do that, we want to, uh, we have a giveaway here for who can tell me the year and the opus number of the first piece that was actually a 12-tone piece. I know everybody knows it, you just are afraid. <laughs> to bring attention to yourselves, and I don't blame you, I respect you for that. So, um, I'm, I'm just gonna select someone to, to give it to her, I'll throw it up in the air, and then you can all go <laughs> diving for it. Here you go. Uh, okay, you need it. Can you get it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, anyway, we got that taken care of. The year, do you know the answer? No. This is a prominent musician in I Boston know it. with degrees and graduate degrees, you know, New England Conservatory. Um, the year was 1925. It was uh, Arnold Schoenberg in Vienna, and he was slowly pulling apart tonality, and finally in 1925, he wrote what he called Opus 25. So the melody goes like this. Day. <laughs> so uh, we're going to move on to uh, this little tune called Mamadou Batiki um, from somewhere in Western Africa. Thank you. 
know that was one of those that took me from a, an old legend about a shopkeeper. Um, I want to go back into the previous set of the song that I, I, I really would like to do. It's called um, uh, really Illinois song, chanson Illinois, Illinois song. So it was transcribed by a French explorer in Central America, Central United, what's now Central United States. Um, um, in 1670. So uh, we're going to do that. We're going back to number two, Alex, in your hymnal. Okay. And we have another giveaway. Uh, we have another quiz. Um, I'm sure someone will be more more vocal this time and and, uh, you know, and uh, really come up with the answer. This is uh, Beauty's Rose. It's a collection of reflections on the Shakespeare sonnets. The featured artist is one of my favorites. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we need we need to come up with a with a quiz. So. Um, okay, we're do, we'll do something easier this time because I, I want people to feel good about being here this evening. So, uh, who played drums for the Beatles? <laughs> All right, there, we have an answer. I know nobody else knew, so it's good that, that you knew here you get Beauty's Rose, the gentleman over there um, with the two legs. <laughs> so now we're gonna do Illinois Song. By the way, if you want to reach us, we're easily reachable. Uh, the website is pianojazz.com. And I further wanted to thank Rio, who's standing right here, and his colleague Theo behind the bar uh, for all the hard work that they do to keep this, this institution rolling. Theo, Rio himself is a brilliant musician, often featured in these rooms and many other throughout many others throughout the world. And thank you also to Justin, who's holding down the door and, and welcomed you this evening. Um, <clears throat> and also thanks to Spike Wilner, who um, actually owns uh, this fabulous establishment as well as Smalls across the street. So um, anyway, the Illinois Small. Those part of the act. Thank you. 
end of that. <laughs> that is one cool tune. Um, that's called the Illinois song, written, the transcription, not written. Transcribed, meaning written down by a, a, a French explorer in 1670. We have another tune uh, from uh, Italy, of all places, in the late 16th century, which you might recognize, and uh, I'll explain what it is after we play it. Um, this would be number 13. Number 13 in your handout. Tell me what that was. You get an A <laughs> and a copy of 
beauties of the road, the collection of reflections on the Shakespeare sonnets by one of my favorite composers, which again is me. <laughs> so that was actually, in, in Italian it's called Antica Danza ed Aria, Laura Suave. So it was written in 1599 by Fabrizio Carosio. But it's known because it was taken by Respighi and called Ancient Ancient Dances. Fabulous piece for orchestra. Anyway. We'll go back to the Beatles questions a little bit later. The next tune we're gonna do is actually, it's another Native American tune called a gambling song. And this is from, um, from Utah. Did we do this in the first? Uh, we didn't do this. Yeah, so we, uh, after I looked at this for a while, this is a very old song from the far west, uh, but it was first transcribed in the middle of the 19th century. Um, I realized it's really a blues, so that's how we'll set this one up. So it's called the gambling song. I was, I was just I was just about to tell a really tasteless joke, but my daughter Kira is here and she is chastising me. If you can imagine your own daughter chastising you for a joke that I told a year ago. You know, they don't forget. So if I'm restraining I'm I'm under restraint.
Justin doesn't stand here just because he's trying to get a tan, you know. Uh, so we have another d Reformation disc, and this will go to the person who first comes up with the name of the song that was performed by the Kingsmen called Louis Louis. No one knows the name of the Pardon? Louis Louis by the Kingsmen? There you go. Who's that? Come in here. And we try to make it, you know, try to accommodate. Thank you very much, everybody. Justin. All right. Burnett Thompson, everyone. Alex Blake. I'm glad you're all here and enjoyed this music. If you'd like to stay for the next set, Pasquale Grasso, just let me know and uh, we'll see what we can do. Let's have another big round of applause for these two wonderful musicians.